What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to clean the carbs on this 1992 XJ600 Seca 2. Now if you've probably heard in this clip, nope. the bike really isn't running right now. I'm pretty sure it's not getting the correct amount of fuel on all four cylinders. So we're going to take out the carbs, clean out all the holes. I'll show you how we go through the process and getting the carbs off, draining them, cleaning them, putting them back on the bike. And then hopefully it runs better. If not, at least we've ruled one thing out of the problem. Let's get it. All right, to get to the carburetors, obviously you gotta get the seat off to get the tank off. Tank's got one bolt up here and one under the seat. And then to get the carbs off, well, we have to undo these little connectors that connect the carburetor to like the cylinder head. We also have to get the throttle cables off of there. That's just some 10 millimeter bolts that we'll take out. get this air filter housing off. We should have one bolt up here, but don't. Hopefully you do. Then we have these four Phillips screws that hold the air filter housing to the top of the carburetors. You also have this little vent line you have to undo. Before you take the carburetors right off the bike, you wanna drain the bowls so you don't have gas everywhere. There's a drain right here right there, and then there's two on the other side, on the other two carburetors. But it basically drains out a little hole, get a little cup, catch it in there, prevent your garage from reeking of gas. The bottom cable will get out when the carbs are halfway off the bike, like hanging in the air so we can access the bottom of them. As for the rest, we've got a fuel line here we gotta take off, and we've got some other fittings right here. Uh, that comes off the carburetor, and another fitting right here that needs to come off. Here's the way of looking at carbs. You've got your top hats here, which has a rubber diaphragm in the middle. It allows this plate here to slide up and down. Essentially, there's vacuum created here that pulls up this slide when you go wide open. You want to make sure these slides move smoothly. They should fall and push up with the same amount of effort. Now on the bottom half, you've got your carb bowls, and you can see these are connected with tubes. Not really sure if fluid's exchanging between these or what the purpose of these are, but they're connecting. So we're gonna disconnect the tubes so we can pull the bowls off independently because I wanna work on one bowl at a time. But you have four Phillips head screws that hold on each bowl, and you gotta be very careful not to strip them or else your bowl is stuck on and they're rather soft metal. You have to be mindful of this screw here. It's a flat head down inside this hole. That's going to be one of your mixture adjustment screws. This is your idle adjust. You don't really want to go messing with that unless you got a bad idle. And on the front side, uh, this is your choke, the thing that moves left and right. Make sure it moves smoothly. I wouldn't disassemble it unless you absolutely have to. We're not going to take apart the whole rack of the carbs. We're just going to take apart the bowls, top hats, clean all the holes that we can see, and go from there. Let's get it. All right, now we've got the carb completely gutted. We can start cleaning and finding problems. This is your float right here. You wanna make sure it's not cracked and that it's also, well, uh, not full of fluid. If you find this full of gas, then you've got a crack in your float and it'll sink and it won't do its job. It pushes up and down on a needle here. So this is your gas inlet to your carburetor. Now I'm not sure which one's main jet and which one's pilot jet, but you've got these two holes here. They're gonna be letting gas in. You can also take off this stud to take off this whole assembly, which we'll get to in just a sec. And then I've taken out the carb slide with this big spring under the top hat here. This is what holds down the spring and you're pushing up against. If this isn't clean here, it's going to move in a rough way, not smoothly. From the top here, you can see a couple other holes. We've got an air hole here, which seems to go to behind the throttle plate, which is probably choke related. Uh, we've got another hole here and just make sure all this is clean. I took all the diaphragm stuff out so that when I spray parts cleaner in here, it's not going to damage the plastic parts. Time to put this one back together and see if there's anything wrong with the rest of them.
as with any intricate job, whenever you take something apart, put them in a bin so you know where they go back to. Looking a little closer at this carburetor, this here is your fuel inlet, which is regulated by your needle and float. Uh, these two are air inlets, these two small angled ones. They lead uh, to the front of the carburetor here, so make sure those blow through straight. Uh, this piece can be moved. You can like wiggle it out. Uh, you don't want to, you can just leave it there for now. Oh shit. This hole essentially that just fell out of the carburetor is what lines up with the needle here on the bottom. They insert and how much the taper exposes. As the slide rises, it lets more fuel out through this main tube here. All right, I got the cars back together. Don't know if I did anything, but it's time to put him back on the bike. Let's get it. Time to see if our work was any good. We got power, I've already primed the carbs with some fuel, just gravity fed it in there. Uh, let's get the bike up and level, maybe that'll help. All right, got full choke, no throttle. That's a wrap on the XJ600 carburetor clean. It seems to have done the trick. You know, this is the thing that boggles my mind and bothers me about carburetors is I cleaned it. I cleaned all the holes that I could see and made sense to me to clean and I fixed it. Do I know where I fixed it? No. Do I know how or at what moment or which hole was clogged? No. I did see some rust come out of the carburetors that was like sitting in the bowls and some of the passages between the carburetors where the fuel enters basically from the tank the, some of the rust made it through the fuel filter and made its way into the carburetor. So could that have been our problem? Possibly. Did I find anything glaringly wrong? No. But does it run like a lot better now? Yeah, it sure does. It still kind of has that clatter, thunking, juddering noise when the idle gets really low, but I'm not sure if that's just too low or if that's the normal idle or if there's something wrong and it should be idling lower and not making that noise all because I don't have a tachometer reading. Like my taco cable isn't connected to the engine or something and it isn't working, so I don't know how fast the engine's spinning. So I just increased the idle until that clunking noise went away and it can idle off choke and no throttle. So win, win, win. You know, you could ride this bike around the city, not have big problems because it's not gonna die on you at a stoplight. That's the problem I'd say with most carbureted bikes that are neglected. So if this video helped you out, please smash the like and subscribe button down below. If you have any questions about this job or any things you're struggling with on this XJ, drop a comment down below. I do my best to answer all the questions. Thanks for watching everybody. And as always, have a good day.